Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Refold Roundtable podcast, where we talk about the language topics that you want us to talk about. And in this week's episode, we are talking about making the best out of your schedule, especially if it's busy. My name is Bree, aka Briz, and I am a social media person for Refold, and I'm learning Spanish. I'm in about stage 3A, uh, follow if you're into the Refold roadmap, accompanied by Gorg, Pag. Do you want to introduce yourself really quick? Hello, everybody. I'm uh, George Pig, aka Gorg Pag, the community manager at Refold, and uh, I like languages. I guess I'm technically like a stage three Spanish learner, a stage four Filipino learner. And uh, yeah, I like languages. We That's great. <laughs> We're also uh, have Shiki with us here today. Shiki, do you want to do a brief introduction about yourself? Yes, I am Shiki and I am a language coach for Refold. I am learning Japanese and I am like in the first third i would say of stage 2c wow 2c that's a great stage mm -hmm. and this week we have a special guest with us his name is Doviend, aka pete you might have seen him moderating the italian server or um chatting in the refold central server he's a language lover but we invited him invited him here today because he has a really busy schedule but he still manages to fit in like an amazing 35 hours a week immersing immersing <laughs> do you want to introduce yourself and tell the world about your language learning and your schedule and things like that sure yeah um uh quick background i've been learning languages for you know off and on for uh, quite a long time now i actually originally started with japanese although i, I didn't go I actually go that far with it and i didn't know about uh, immersion learning at that point uh but right now i'm working on uh, italian and uh stage 2c in refold and uh yeah in the last i mean italian the, the the focus of the 35 hours a week thing lately has just been the urgency because my sister was getting married in Italy. So I was like, I need to squeeze as much time in as I can before I go. And so that was like, led to me finding even more, you know, like search wow. between the couch cushions for extra time to, to you know, to get <laughs> yeah. this going. Right. So, um, so but in the, the past, schedule? I've studied about, uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. So I was just going to say, in the past, I've studied off and on probably nine languages, but I'm not actually wow. that great at most of them. Um, but conversational in German and Chinese, I'd say probably at this point. But yeah, that's amazing. sorry, your question was? No, no, that's fine. That's that's I've crazy. So no, you said that just recently. Dolian. Yeah, we have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, but my first question is, so you mentioned that you just recently bumped it up to 35 hours a week. What was your schedule like before that? Um, I would say, so the last one that I was working on seriously before I started on Italian was, uh, mm -hmm. last year I was working on Hindi, um, okay. in my city here in Vancouver, Canada, there's a lot of Hindi speakers and that's been on my list for a while. But at that time I was probably doing somewhere around 20 hours a week. Um, I would say that it's normally my goal when, when doing an immersion project that I, I aim at an average of 21 hours a week, just to make like a round number divided by seven, whatever. Um, I don't always achieve that, but that's often like, if I'm just gonna start a project, I'm like, okay, baseline, how do I get 21 hours? And usually what that looks like just as a, as a you know, rough uh, weekly schedule is as much as I can get in on the weekdays. And then I try and get like a big solid block of time in on Saturday and Sunday morning. Uh, you know, I'll take whatever time I can get, but as long as I can kind of guarantee like a Saturday morning block and a Sunday morning block, then I can often make up a lot of the hours that I'm missing from the rest of the week by by getting uh, extra time in on the weekends. So you don't necessarily try to get an even amount of hours every single day. You're comfortable with kind of like front loading that or back loading that on the weekends if you need to. Yeah, my my normal per day goal is mm -hmm. I would like like there's this phenomenon that i that i really value i don't have any evidence that it's that it's super great but i but i personally value it which is the circumstance where if you do enough listening in a particular day then even when you're not listening later 
then you kind of get these like phrases from the language bubbling up in your head randomly and you're just like when did i hear that yes yeah i totally noticed that Mm -hmm. so so they kind of like come into your head and you're like i'm not even sure when i heard that phrase but it's certainly a phrase like it might have come from an audio book or a a video i was watching but i want to get that every day if i can and for me that usually takes I would say probably two hours of listening before that starts to happen. So I don't always get it every day, but that's what I'm thinking about when I'm trying to to place the time in my day. Gotcha. Um, but and then norm, normal weekday for me is I want to get any time that I can in before work, which might be 15 minutes or it might be an hour depending on the day. But I, that's kind of like my promise to myself is just get some time in before right. work and some time in after work. And as long as those two kind of time slots are open to me, then I find that I get a lot more than if I skip one, right? If I skip before work completely, and then I'm like, oh, I'm going to try and squeeze in hours after work. It feels like a little bit more of a stretch. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way as you where I like to start my day off with immersing um, or doing something in my target language, which is immersing. (laughs) Um, because if I do that, then it's not a zero day and I've already accomplished something. And then it makes like the rest of the day not have so much pressure um, to get that immersion in. So I totally get that. Um, you mentioned that you started, you like to get immersing in before work. So is that in the morning? Do you wake up really early to get your immersion in or is your work, does your work start in the afternoon? Uh, yeah, I in the past number of years, I've kind of become more of a morning person um i also Same. am a bird i'm a bird watcher so there's better birds in the morning too so that's kind of been a motivation to get up early too but uh in the morning yeah i, I mean i want to get any time in but my normal day is like i work about nine to five and i work from home so as long as i'm at my computer at nine o'clock then basically i'm starting work so that means yeah. that right right now i don't have any commuting to worry about previously i did commute you know before the the panini, but uh, but uh, yeah, right now uh, I I think my normal day right now is I I, I think I sleep about like 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's that's kind of my like my sleep schedule. Um, you know that could rotate or whatever, but that does actually leave me a lot of time before work. The sometimes I'm sad because like it sounds theoretically like okay if I get up at 6:01 a.m. and then I start work at 8:59 then I've got you know like if you think about all of the minutes that I could have spent on Italian in that time then I'll probably be sad later because I'm definitely not going to get all of those minutes in productively. But so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut in here for a sec. So I want to pull this in a little bit of a different direction. So first off. I don't think we did a great job introducing you. Delvian, you have been around for a long time. Like, you had a blog <laughs> when I was first starting to learn languages, like 10, like 10 years ago, right? You were very active in the How to Learn a Language community, the old, right. original sort of polyglot YouTubers. Uh, I think you've, like, even met a few of them, had coffee with Steve. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just really glad to finally have you on the podcast. And uh, what's impressive to me and why we invited you on is because you do manage to hit around 35 hours a week, which is like a full-time job. Uh, despite, one, I believe you're married, and two, you're a programmer with an actual full-time job. So <laughs> I am so happy to have you here. It's really cool. Um, and yeah, I just thank you so much for being here. And for today, I think what we're going to talk about, we're going to have a round table, is sort of like how we can squeeze in the most of our time. So you mentioned that you don't commute right now, but When you did commute, what did you do with your time? Like, how did you get, like, how would you have turned that into Italian time today if suddenly your boss said, hey, Delvian, you have to go back to the office? That is an excellent question. Um, I would say I'm actually, like, heavily influenced by Steve Kaufman, um, who lives in the same city as me. Like, if I got in my car right now, I could get to Steve's house in 45 minutes. I don't know where he lives, actually, but, like, wherever he is, I could get there in about 45 minutes. But... When I was first learning about immersion language learning, I was, I had discovered AJAT and I was reading Katsumoto like the Bible. And then I discovered Steve Kaufman and I had listened to a lot of his stuff and, and read his book at the time. And I really wanted to learn how to do that. And so I'm, I'm going to talk briefly about German to answer your question, because the first language that I learned as an immersion learner was German. And uh, at that time I was also working. Um, and so I talked to Steve and I said, 
I sent him an email or something like that. And I said, Hey, I like all your stuff. You're really interesting. I've watched your YouTube. Uh, I live in the same city. Uh, do you want to meet up? Can, can we chat about languages? And he's like, yeah, sure. And so we went for sushi in downtown Vancouver. Uh, super nice guy. Uh, he talked in Japanese to the, uh, the wait staff and, uh, uh, yeah, so, but, um, so I was heavily inf influenced by what he was saying. And he was like, you always need to have something available to fill up your time. That's not like, like intellectually concentrated time. Like, like for my job as a programmer, I have to use a lot of brain cells and mash them together a lot to, you know, try and think up some code. Um, so I don't actually do a lot of, I don't have any opportunity to do language things while I'm at work, but, um, what Steve had said that really influenced me long ago was when you're doing the dishes or if you're riding the bus or you're doing something like that, that's not calling your complete attention, then, Hey, why not have some, why not have like an MP3 player or whatever, that's going to play some sounds at you or have a book or, or have your phone with Anki on it or, or anything like that. And I'm like, Hey, yeah, that makes sense. And so that, that was my introduction to immersion learning was to have that available in that kind of, semi downtime, right? I'm washing dishes or whatever. So yeah, uh, back to your question, what would I do with commuting time? Uh, what I have done in the past is I, I, sometimes if I'm going heavy on Anki, then I get my Anki reps in while I'm on the bus. Um, that depended on my commuting, uh, like the, the method of commute, because if I had a bunch of bus connections, then I couldn't necessarily listen to like a half hour podcast. If I had like a 15 minute bus and then a 15 minute train, then I had to transfer in the middle. Um, but Anki actually fits in like any, literally any time, right? Because you can do like one rep and then you're like, whoops, got to go, you know? Um, so Anki is a great one for that. With Anki, yeah. I, I totally agree that it fits in anywhere. But what I've noticed in the community is that a lot of people are, are adverse to splitting it up. So like for me personally, I would be happy to like do Anki a little bit while I'm taking a, a quick break at work or if I'm on the bus or something. Um, and I think it's good that you mentioned that, hey, you can break it up. You can get in your Anki like throughout the day. You don't have to do a 30 minute session. Yeah. And I'll mention that like right now I'm not heavily using Anki and my use of it goes up and down depending on my circumstance. But right now, because Italian feels easy and I say that kind of not, I don't want to trivialize it because it's hard. Like I'm working hard on it, but uh, compared to like Chinese or Hindi or something like that, then I'm going to call Italian like 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 easy in comparison, but still takes a lot of hours. And there's a lot, there's so many words in Italian that I get kind of for free, you know, anything that ends in like T-I-O-N in English exists in Italian and stuff like that. So I haven't actually spent a lot of time trying to like say, I didn't do a 1K deck in Italian. Um, I just started right away with stuff on YouTube uh, from day one. Um, and I would, I can see myself using Anki in Italian later when I'm trying to grab like a less frequent words. If I'm trying to work from like a B2 to a C1 kind of, you know, uh, stage in the European measurement, um, like I'm collecting a whole bunch of obscure words. That's probably where I would use Anki. But when I was doing Hindi, for example, I did a lot of, uh, you know, SRS type of time in Hindi just to learn the basics because there's so many basic words that just didn't correspond but yeah i i view anki time as just like fill in the blanks um but if i i would rather if i had like a a, a a half hour in a row that's uninterrupted then i would rather listen to a podcast or watch a video or something like that and how about you guys spree uh how do you yeah. break up your time like when you don't have a lot of time what do you do yeah. so imagine you've only got you know, I mean, you've also got life. a busy schedule, right? You, <laughs> yeah, you this work, is my life. You homeschool, and then yeah. also you're like a full time parent and, and wife. So, yeah. what do you do with your limited time? So, we've just talked about like sort of breaking up Anki, squeezing it in when you can, yeah. toilet breaks, commuting. Yeah. Um, where else does time exist, guys? You know, that's a really good, really good question. So, like for me personally, I was one of those people that when I was doing Anki, I had to do it all at once. Um, but what I did was I would pair it with my morning coffee. I don't know about y'all, but when I wake up, I kind of need a couple moments to myself when I don't talk to anybody. And so I would use that time as Anki time. Um, and lately, I've been trying to pair um, immersion with 
other habits slash chores. So when I do dishes, that is always, always, always um, audiobook time or podcast time. Um, when I do my evening walks, that's also podcast time. And I and before bed too. So in the morning when everybody's still sleepy and not talkative is when I tend to immerse. And then um, right before bed is really good. And to your point about commuting, I don't commute. I work from home um, like a lot of people. Um, but when I do have to drive, I find that I really enjoy listening to an audiobook of a book that I have already read or listened to before. So that way I can still focus on the road. But it's still really good immersion because um, I'd be listening to the radio anyway. Do you guys like to listen to like w listen to your target language when you're driving, or do you find yeah, it too much? Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. So since my schedule is pretty packed during the week, since I'm in school, uh, the only real time I can immerse is during like lunch breaks um, from work. And so I've seen your lunch breaks. You just send pictures of your food. Yeah, I want I pictures. Do. That's not I want immersing. food pictures. That's not <laughs> I, 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 okay, yes. But uh, <laughs> I will watch like YouTube at my laptop when I'm at home while I eat um, and have uh, Japanese playing in the car when I drive back and forth to school. Um, and I'm pretty similar with Dovian here, where it's like I can't really guarantee much during the week but during the weekends i'll do like three or four hours i'll do that like too on saturday sunday i'll do that too where i only get you know i consider two hours a good day a good day kind of like dovian does um where i feel like that's when i feel like i'm really jiving and riffing off the language and it's great but my minimum is an hour but usually I binge read on the weekends. So, um, Gord, do you do that too? Where so it sounds like me, Dovian, and Shiki all do that. Do you also binge on the weekends or no? I get the most immersion time in on the weekend. Um, <gasps> it's really interesting. So all I'm a big us. fan of Link and Steve Kaufman. Uh, and uh, the cool thing about Link is that it tracks your stats like instantly. And you can actually see a nice little graph of like, how often you're reading your words read per day, like over the week or over the past month or even the past year. And what I have noticed, because Link just got Tagalog, so it's like, it's it's free for a couple of months. I'm like, I have to try it, right? Like, a, I'm a Tagalog learner, stage four. Let's try out the new tool. Um, and I've been using it a lot lately, but I maybe read anywhere from like two to 4,000 words uh, in the, like during the week. But on the weekend, I can read like, like 20,000 words. Um, so that's like something like 60 pages of a book if it were a physical book. Um, so yeah, I can totally visualize my immersion going up and down, uh, over the week and it definitely peaks on the weekend. If I may, I'd like to jump in on what was mentioned about a minimum time and ask you guys about your thoughts on that. Because for me, the concept of a minimum time is actually like, it digs into my motivation. And so oh, what it? what I tell myself is that I don't need to guarantee a certain amount of time. I just need to actually start. And for me, starting is the hardest part. I could be, I don't know, surfing Reddit or I don't know, you, you all have your time wasting mechanisms, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> yes. But um, I need to get away from those, like put down the like addictive social media or whatever it is and start on my thing and even like when i start it's like no matter what i can pick anything it could be like a a 30 second video it just has to be something that's in italian or whatever my target language is and i actually liken this back to um what somebody told me about trying to go to the gym right if you're trying to go work out uh, a certain amount of times a week and there's this like reluctance like oh i gotta go outside and like walk to the gym and oh, it feels like such a hassle Sometimes when you get there, you're like, why was I reluctant? This feels great. Like, I feel I feel really good. But when you're at home and you're on the couch and you're in your pajamas or whatever it is, and you're like, I have to overcome this momentum. Yeah. So to, to me, that's actually, that's huge because that's the biggest barrier for me. So this person about talking about gym, uh, going to the gym, he said, uh, you don't have to go to the gym, but you do have to put your shoes on and stand by the door. And mm. if you did that, 
And then you thought to yourself, yeah, it's actually like thunderstorming outside. And I actually can't go for whatever reason. If you've got your shoes and your shirts on and you're at the door and you decide not to go, it's legit. But it, usually you put your shoes on and you're at the door and you're like, well, I got this far. I guess I'm going. Right. Right? That, that overcomes the momentum. And so yeah. I try to take that mindset into my morning language time. I'm just like, I'm going to turn on YouTube. I'm just going to click on whatever video is first, even if I don't even care what it's about. I'm just going to click on something and get started. So I don't have a minimum one yeah. hour. If I get started, it'll probably end up being something good. Right. Mm. No, I totally get that. And I I say that my minimum is one hour because that's what I usually do, like at minimum. But what you said was a really good point in that I don't tell myself I'm going to get an hour. I tell myself, well, I'm going to start the day with a video by my favorite target language YouTuber, or I'm going to start the day with listening to um, my audiobook, and I just turn it on. Um, my minimum is really more like, I just know what I usually, that's like usually just like the least that I do. Um, but I don't yeah, okay. punish myself. I'm not like, oh man, I have to get my hour. <laughs> oh, oh, I really got to grind this. You know, it's like, oh, I'm just going to turn on YouTube and then you know, usually cumul cumulatively, what did I say that right? I can't English today. Throughout the day, mm -hmm. I will get at least an hour. Um, but I consider that like, okay, that was all right, you know. Um, but two hours I consider really good. Do you guys have the same thing? Do you guys have a minimum or? Uh, oh, no. For me, like during the week, I tell myself if I just get, 30 minutes of something during my lunch break or uh, when I listen to stuff in the car, it's like, that's fine enough for me during the week. And then the weekend is really when I would like really grind. And I like yeah. to have, I like to have minimums on the weekend, but not so much during the week. So on mm. the weekend, I like to have like a two hour minimum at least. Yeah. What about you, Gorg? Do you have a minimum? You know, I've tried it. I got a habit tracker <laughs> and yeah. uh, the shoes and shorts analogy that Davian gave is actually the same analogy that I hear thrown around a lot. And um, definitely like something like a two or a five minute daily minimum. I've tried, but I really don't. I'm just so, I'm casual with my language learning, but I'm not. It comes in waves. Like, um, you know, the other day I did seven chapters of a book in one sitting. That was really cool. Some days it's like, I just read a little bit. Uh, so definitely not the most systematic. And definitely I've not kept up with any of my daily meetings. Yeah, I feel Actually, bad. I get really demotivated with, with um, tracking personally, where like the the mental load of having to think about if I could or could not track something because I was distracted for a split second was really difficult for me <laughs> to get over. I want to know what y'all's wasted time is. So, Dovian, you mentioned earlier, like, cutting out um, social media and things like that. Where did you cut out, like, time to for language learning? So you fit in 35 hours a week. What are some, like, maybe sacrifices isn't the right word, but what are some things that you cut out or pushed aside to make room for Italian? Uh I would say actually for 35 hours, it really is in the realm of sacrifices. So like, yeah. I, maybe I'll go back and clarify, like for, for something like 21 hours a week, that's like serious business, but I can, I can get that. It's not too hard for me to get that. Uh, but 35 hours, that's like, that's the grind. Like, like you, you gotta really be working. I have to really be working to get that. So, um, and you mentioned tracking too, to get 35 hours, I, I have to be on top of the tracking. I have to be watching the daily total. I want to get like at least X hours in each day. Otherwise I'm going to fall behind and have to make it up later. Like it does actually take significant organizational effort for me to grind out 35 hours. So I mentioned that was like, okay, my sister's getting married on like this day. And then I like back calculated how many days do I have? And I know I want to get this many hours. And like, there was like a lot of grinding going on and a lot of spreadsheets and, and whatever. But um, for the, you know, for like a 21 hour type of week, I don't, I don't feel the grind uh, so much. 
But the things that I've cut out, as you asked, um, for 35 hours, I have to cut out a lot, right? So like, uh, there's people, you know, vying for my attention, like, hey, do you want to hang out? Do you want to go bird watching or whatever the other hobbies are, stuff like that, you know? For example, like bird watching is not usually like a small amount of time. It's like, hey, let's drive out to this place outside of town and like spend like more than half the day there. And the whole time I'm like looking at my watch like, oh, geez, got to get back to my town. Um, so <laughs> it does definitely for 35 hours a week seriously needs sacrifice. That's like I'm cutting out the bird watching. I'm like telling my friends, hey, you know, like I'll, I'll talk to you. You got like a limited amount of time, but like, hey, I got to travel to Italy in, in two weeks or whatever it was, right? So there was a lot of sacrifice to hit that target. But um, for 21 hours, it feels like more like as long as I get like like some time in in the morning and some time in in the evening, and then I get some time on the weekends in large chunks, then it's actually a lot a lot more doable. Gotcha. That, that makes a lot of sense. So... Do you feel like even though you've had to make a lot of sacrifices that you still have a pretty good balance between language learning and, you know, living your life? Yeah, I'd say like right now things are like a little bit more balanced. So like I'm not getting 35 hours right now. I think I'd actually like to do a little bit more intensive project for a couple of weeks just because like sometimes that kind of gets you over a hump. Like mm -hmm. I'm I'm at this point in Italian right now where reading is becoming easier like I don't know every word or whatever but like reading feels like a more pleasurable activity and I really want to dig into that like I want reading because reading is where that, that's one of my favorite activities and so I want it to feel like yeah I can just pick up a book and enjoy it so I want to kind of force myself through more time to get myself over like the next hump and, and make that easier but I also want to be able to watch videos a little bit easier too because right now there's the familiar stuff feels okay and I'm getting the gist of things as it goes along and sometimes I'm getting high understanding and sometimes I'm getting kind of understanding I'd like to push that over right and, and get into that at least like you know at least decent understanding all the time would be really cool and it, like once you get to that stage then it kind of feels like yeah you're just kind of sailing along because because the immersion time is so pleasurable so I'd, I'd like to like force the time a little bit maybe in the next uh, little while just to get over the hump but gotcha. uh yeah yeah that 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 makes sense and do you feel like this is a question for everyone um because i've noticed that the further along i get in spanish the easier it is to fit it in my day um in the beginning things require i feel like even if you're just passively immersing i feel like it requires a little bit more attention in that you usually need to look things up more or you have you're having to watch something you can't really do things um, while you're doing other things but now that i'm at a point where in my domains that i'm very comfortable in i can listen to a podcast or a book no problem and it's really easy to kind of fit that into my day without it like taking up space if that makes any sense have have you guys noticed the same thing Uh, yeah, I definitely have noticed that because it's like, um, I, I'm I'm probably not as comfortable as you are with Spanish as Japanese because you're like stage three and I'm like a oh, little baby 2C. Ooh. But um, no, 2C and 2, 3 kind of was like a blurry. <laughs> I, I, according to some, I might still be 2C. I don't know. I, I mm. feel like I'm stage three, but I don't know. It's fine. But well, continue. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of at that, uh, I guess, comfortable stage where it's like i can just turn on japanese youtube and just pick something to watch and usually like um let's plays uh vtubers playing games it's like like a relaxing thing like i don't have to do use much brain power for that and uh like watching slice of life anime doesn't really take much brain power so it's kind of a relaxing activity so it doesn't feel like it's intruding on your time right how about you, Gorg? Um, yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. I, I find, and I, I sound like a, a broken record here. Please it's do. It's easier to fit in um, immersion when you're actually good at the language, right? 
like whenever you're a native English speaker and you just you open up Reddit and you browse the front page, it's not a big burden to do that. Um, the same way, like once you're relatively advanced in your target language, you can open up target language social media and you browse it the same way. So my Reddit feed is mixed. Um, I do get a lot of the feed from the Filipino subreddits uh, as well as like non-Filipino subreddits, but it's not a huge burden for me to go through and just read the comments and read what they're talking about. And uh, it takes literally no effort to do that. Um, so yeah, I, I think that most people would agree immersion becomes easier the better you get. Yeah, so here's a question for you. What do you think someone could do in the beginning stages to fit in more immersion time into a busy schedule? Oh, no, that's a good question. Yeah, when it's not How so to, easy. When it's not easy. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. definitely the the answer I have, the first thing that comes to mind is like more free flow, less intensive. Um, mm -hmm. Intensive can be real bugbear when you don't understand words. So I the first thing I would that. suggest is like, Pay attention to noticing words. Don't worry about totally understanding them. Just be like, you know, like that one uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio meme where he's like pointing. He's like, yeah, right there, right there, right? It's so like, hey, I know that word. I saw it in Anki. Or, oh, I've heard that word in my, my other immersion. You may not know what it means, but that's okay. Just focus on like noticing words, noticing grammar patterns. Like if you're learning Spanish, pay attention to like verb endings and focus on noticing. Free flow, free flow, free flow. Uh, intensive can come later because actually intensive eventually ends up being not so intensive once you understand most of what you're reading it's or true. watching. It's true. What I would say is trying to take advantage of nostalgia. Like yes. if you have something from your past that you've watched before in your native language or whatever language it is, your comfortable language, and then in your target language, try to seek things out that are like that exact thing. Like just watch it in your target language this time. Or try to find things that are similar that would give you that same level of, I don't know, uh, comfort. Like feel good feelings. Like it's a, like you're snuggling up to a warm blanket kind of feeling. I think that's, I I think that's huge. Yeah, I really like that point. Um, I. Let me just actually add something to both uh, uh, Gorg's and uh, Shiki's uh, comment here. Um, Gorg's comment, um, at when I'm at the start of a language, I do like, I, I like the idea of advising people to go for more free flow because that's not something that comes intuitively to a lot of people who are maybe new to language learning. And, they, and they're kind of like, they're worried about all the stuff that they missed rather than all the stuff that they noticed. Um, one thing that helped me with, with free flow as a beginner was uh, it was actually some, somebody years ago from the How to Learn Any Language Forum. Um, I forgot his name. What was it? It was like the the Danish guy who really liked his vocab study. Do you remember his uh, name? Was Iverson? Well, I, that's yes. not how you say Iverson. his name in in Danish, but I've always read it as Iverson. The uh, yeah, the the Danish guy with his word list method. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. him. So famous. He said he said at one point he's like one listening exercise that you can do even if you understand nothing is he called it um following something like following the sounds like a bloodhound follows a scent you're kind of you're entirely concentrated on what is the next sound what is the next sound now you only see exactly what's in front of you you're not worried about the big picture you're just like what's the next sound and you just do that intensive listening and it takes energy it takes a lot of energy but it's a thing that you can do at any time, even if you know zero vocabulary. It gets you stuff about intonation. It gets you stuff about the different consonants and vowels. And as you, even as you progress fairly quickly, you'll you'll get familiar words. You'll be like, oh yeah, I heard that word last sentence, right? But it gives you something to reconcentrate on. Like, whoops, I'm daydreaming about something else. No, just like think about what is the next sound and keep following. It like you got your nose down to the trail. Yeah, uh, for sure. I, I, and I was going to mention also another thing that I like as a beginner is having a variety. What I used to do when I was studying Chinese, which was actually a more of a classroom thing for me because I did an intensive course at university in Chinese, but I would spread out books on the table. And right now, now I do like a, I have a full digital, you know, work style. But at the time, I just like I like the idea of sitting down at a table, 
I would have my textbooks from school. I would have maybe a dictionary. I would have some other extra book that I found. I would have some kind of fun book and I would spread them out on the table in front of me and I would just pick one up and just kind of start working on it. And if it, if it was like, no, nah, I'm not really feeling this one, then put it down and pick up the next one. But when you have your resources laid out in front of you and some of them are ones that you liked yesterday, you may not like it today, but lay them out in front of you and then you can just keep going. And that helps me avoid going to Twitter or, you know, whatever else, you know, kind of stuff like that, right? Uh, if I want to drop one thing, I can drop it in favor of the book right next to it that's still in my language. That makes a lot of sense. I would do that. I like that, like, just kind of like filling your vision with all of your immersion material so you can't look at anything else. It's like the equivalent of horse blinders. Like, all you can look at is this, so you have to do one of these things. That's great. That's great. I'm just going to keep trotting, right? I can't see anybody beside yeah, Exactly. Me. Like, oh, I can't see anything else but Spanish. Here I go. I, I remember that. That actually. Kind of like... Oh, go ahead. That actually kind of reminds me of the whole, like, a chat Katsumoto type thing. Like, just turn your environment into your language. It's not quite the same here because, you know, Davian yeah. mentioned, like, textbooks and dictionaries. But, you know, it. I think there's some some, I don't know, wisdom behind just reducing friction to start doing something in your language. Like if, um, like my Chrome <laughs> defaults to Spanish Google search. Um, and I said it that way, like a long time ago, and I've just never changed it. And it, it does mean that I get Spanish throughout my day, even when I'm not trying. And, um, uh, you know, I get a little bit of Spanish at work, talking to people, doing support. But, uh, yeah, it sounds like it's an interesting way of just reducing friction. Like, just don't make it hard to get it done, right? Make your environment friendly to your, your target language. Don't make it where, like, your target language is something that you just have to do, right? Because, like, if you just got five books and they're all Chinese, you're going to end up doing Chinese. And also, at, you know, going back to, like, the beginner mindset is that as a beginner language learner, you, you're not really aware of all of the, like, like the tricks and different like strategies. I mean, like I've tried so many freaking strategies about language learning that now some of them I still like and some of them I've dismissed, but I like, I kind of have as an experienced language learner, I have a lot of options on the table that a new person doesn't have. And so you want to focus when you're starting on, uh, you need to do, open some of those doors, right? You need to develop, what are some different types of activities that I could do, right? Like, like I said, intensive listening or, Maybe like when I started uh, Italian, I, I really liked the easy Italian YouTube videos because they had English subtitles and Italian subtitles on screen and it was an exact transcription. And even knowing like zero Italian, I could try and like look at the Italian words and look at the English words and try and figure out what was said and maybe rewind a bit and listen again. That was like a, a sort of a new activity, right? Of I don't have any dictionary open. I'm not in a textbook. I'm consuming like the real Italian, but I've got cheater notes at the bottom. That was a great activity for me as a like total noob in Italian, right? Like zero, zero Italian. So you have to open up the, like, what are the possible activities for me? And again, that can still feel hard when, when you're like, okay, somebody told me I got to like watch some TV and I don't understand anything of it. So I'm just going to try and and force myself to watch this show that might be extremely difficult as a beginner because you're just like well i understood zero what do i do now right so keep your options open find more possible activities and then if you've got to drop one you've got another one to pick up and i think it's great that you mentioned uh like re you reeled it back in and talked about like being a beginner language learner um just the other day one of our refull team members josh the uh data scientist data wizard i guess his official title he mentioned yeah, the curse right. of data knowledge. Wizard. <laughs> He's the data wizard. Um, he mentioned the curse of knowledge. And that's where when you have like a profound knowledge of a topic, it's easy to forget what is not obvious to other people, right? So Davian's a dev. He might find certain devy type things very obvious that I would not as a person who's who's only written like two very, very simple Python uh, programs. So it's important to like always be reeling it back and trying to put yourself in another person's shoes, especially when it comes to beginners. I'm trying to remember what I did as a beginner. And I feel like what I did was I didn't have the ES1K, um, the, the refold um, deck of the most 1,000 most common Spanish words. 
Um, I didn't have that. But what I did do was I ran through a couple apps. Um, asterisk. That's like the, the Mr. Salas whatever. method. Well, it is. It it's is. controversial and to a very vocal minority of people. It's, I was going to put like, you know, like in quotes, like air quotes, like controversial. <laughs> but I just kind of, I, sp I sped run it. I went through like the first three levels of Duolingo. I wasn't trying to memorize everything. I was just trying to get through it so I would recognize what was going on on the screen. And I did the first level of Lingo Deer, kind of like briefly looking over the grammar explanations, whatever, and just kind of going through it as, as not as fast as I could, but I did like, I think I did a lesson or like a, I don't know what they're called, how they're broken up, but like a level a day, but like they're really short. Um, I would spend maybe like 20 minutes doing that. And then what I would do is I would immerse after that. And I think I started watching Pokemon, which is a show that I watched before, and I was very familiar with it. I watched it when I was a kid, and I What's looked it for about? things. Po Pokemon. Yeah. What's it about? <laughs> Pocket kidding. monsters, bro. <laughs> like, oh wait, it's about Pikachu and his. It's um, continue. Begrudging friendship with Ash. Um, but anyway, so I watched that. But I remember, like, if I was like curious about something, if I was curious about what was going on. Um, I was watching it with language learning with Netflix and I would kind of pause and I would kind of, you know, click the buttons and translate the words and see what everything was. And then I would continue, but I'd only really pause if I was curious about what was going on and I felt like it, you know? And I think I did that for a while. I just like watched easy kids content and I went through that. And then I got an ASML, um, Anki deck and I went through most of that. And then I started sentence mining. Um, but I feel like I had fun while I was doing it. And as long as I was having fun, it didn't feel like work, even though I had no idea what was going on. So I think doing things that you find, I mean, not to say fun for like the 70th time in a row, but if you find an activity pleasurable, you're going to want to keep doing it, you know? Which and I think in the beginning, it's, it's precisely it's really why, yeah. not to cut you off, it's precisely no, why it gets fine. easier to immerse whenever you're better at the language because it's just much more sure. enjoyable when you're not looking at every third I think it is a double-edged sword, though, because, like, in the beginning, it's like, oh, this is new. I have no idea what's going on. There's, like, the language honeymoon phase where even though you have no idea what's going on, as long as you set up, like, enjoyable habits, um, I think that's, like, a really good way to, like, make or break, you know, if someone's going to succeed or not in, in a language, is if it starts off fun, um, and it's productive, and it's something that they can do easily every single day. Like Dovian said, like putting on your shoes. Like, is it fun to put on your shoes? Do you like doing it? You know, um, I think that's really important in the beginning to do what you like. I just watched anime. <laughs> and you love anime. That's yeah. highly motivating for you because you love doing it. Mm. It was probably fun was... even though you didn't understand it. I think it was Shiki that was saying earlier, though, that you that you had some stuff that was familiar and you gravitated to the familiar thing first mm -hmm. yeah and yeah i forgot to comment on that but i mean i think someone else's phrase was like like the familiarity part is like a an extra like dimension of like of of making it more comprehensible i can't maybe uh uh gorg remembers who, who who was talking about that recently um but it was the um when you later when you're like kind of like pretty good at the language you can get new material like fresh material like i'm just going to go to youtube and click on some video i've never seen the person before or never seen the topic before you can then watch it and it'll be like hey i'm learning something i'm watching a video about physics or whatever but when you're new you can't just go to like i'm going to go watch quantum physics now you need something familiar but the familiarity makes you closer to it makes you understand it more and for me actually a lot of the time that's been star trek like I yes. have watched a lot of Star Trek in the past. I go to Netflix and for European languages anyway, there's like a bunch of different dubs of Star Trek, right? So I remember using that for German. What's my your wife favorite and I series? Watched... Sorry to interrupt, but I just need to know what's your favorite Star Trek series? Uh, good good question. It is DS9 because that's yes! the Space Nine. It is the only answer <laughs> and I will fight answer. anyone who disagrees. Okay, good. We're all DS9 fans here. We are. Uh, I mean, I like I like all of the next generation plus ones oh, i yeah. don't really like the original series that much but yeah we're getting sidetracked but I no no, no say, it's fine it was do... really important to me to know <laughs> I did not like the klingon redesign <laughs> and one of the more recent series 
Uh, if I said the wrong topic. ones, it would be like totally damn, we're gonna get cancelled because of our opinions on Star Trek on a language learning podcast because we all like DS9. They're like, that's it, refold cancelled. All right, sorry for interrupting. Continue. I have Continue. no opinion on this. I was okay, say that my, my wife and I, when we were learning German, we watched all of DS9 and all of Voyager front to back dubbed in German. Yes. And at the start, we were just like, blah, 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 you know, like we didn't really understand that much. <laughs> But it was so familiar because, like, it's honestly, it's pretty cliche, right? Like, so, like, there's a there's a bridge on every type of Star Trek, and there's a red alert on every type of Star Trek. And so, like, the red lights go on, the captain comes onto the bridge, the first thing the captain always says is something like, report. And I remember this really distinctly in one of the first episodes I watched in German, where, like, the red lights go on, there's, like, phaser fire, captain comes onto the bridge, and he says, Bericht. And I'm like, oh, that must mean report. <laughs> so the familiarity is like a, it's a Hacks. big tool. Yeah, that's hacking right there. So I do want to, before, like, we're running out of time here. We're nearing the end of the podcast. I did want to, like, kind of breach this. Back on the topic of uh, just not having a lot of time. If you had to prioritize your activities with immersion or with language learning in general, what would they be? Like, my personal order would be do Anki first or flashcards first, right? Get them out of the way. That way you get that recency effect when you go immerse later. So it'd be something like Anki first, then intensive, and then free flow. Uh, but that's not like a hard or fast rule. But like, if I had to prioritize, that's what I would do as a sort of advanced learner. I agree with that. Like if I had if I had a, a set amount of time, I would do that. I would go totally differently, in fact. Um, <gasps> so my personal theory about my immersion, this may apply to others, um, is that there's some warm-up time that you need. And to me, it doesn't feel like the first couple minutes of my immersion is that good. It feels like it's warm-up. And this is often I will say to people on the channels, I'll say like, if you're trying to learn a language doing like 20 minutes a day, it's kind of like you're always just doing the warm ups and you're not doing like the good, the good stuff. Right. And, you know, maybe you don't have enough time in your day. That's, you know, that's fine. You can't control that. But that's part of my motivation for trying to get more time to try and schedule more time and to try and continue once I've started, because the first like 20 minutes to half an hour, I kind of call that the warm up time. And so I will just do whatever. I'll just go to a YouTube video. It can be literally anything. I don't have to understand it. It doesn't have to be anything. It's going to get me in the mood. It's going to remind me what Italian feels like. There's the ups and downs of the sentences. There's just like, there's a there's a feel to it. You get in the mood, you get into that space, right? So I need my warm up time and that's often video. It's going to be probably not, I was going to say audio, but actually video is better because I'm looking at something and I'm hearing it. It's more attention grabbing, but it's just a, it's a throwaway for me. So I'll do that first 20 minutes and it doesn't even matter what it is. And then I'll be like, okay, now I actually want to go and watch Muscle Savaggio or whatever. Like I want to, there's a thing that I, so that I actually thought I, of. I did want to preface do. this. I was, I was trying to like say like, if we only had a limited amount of time, like imagine uh, you only had like okay. 30 minutes in a day. If you spend that 30 minutes just kind of free flowing and warming up, you've, I mean, I'm not going to say you wasted your time because you, it's not a waste. Certainly, like, do as much immersion as possible. But it's not how I would spend, like, a very, very limited amount of time. Like, if I'm working two jobs and I have ten kids or, you know, something like that. Ten? Then I, ten? I, would go, <laughs> I, would, I would probably go with what with what you said then. If you if you know that, like, like it's it's 8.35 and my work starts at 9.00. What am I going to get in in my in my remaining twenty five minutes just to do something that's going to get my most effect? Yeah, I would, I would probably do if I was doing Anki right now. Then I would do my Anki reps, and then I, maybe I would do some intense stuff. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Like I haven't considered that too much. Maybe it's not high on my priority list to try and optimize that way. I would mostly. I'm concerned with did I get any time in, and I know that I'm constantly distracted like maybe i'm adhd or something but like it's easy to get distracted and it's easy to just go like surf twitter or whatever so honestly if i get anything in then i'm happy i would just free flow because i don't care <laughs> i'm just like i i'm a little bit too good at tolerating ambiguity i think i think that's a superpower i think yeah. that's great because I'm not, I'm not good at tolerating ambiguity. 
I think like the more I learn, I learn about Spanish, the more frustrated I get when I don't understand things. I'm like, I'm just like, this is this is supposed to be easy. <laughs> like, what's going on? But I think that's common for everybody. Um, at yeah. some point, when you're at that like intermediate plateau, you go from, wow, I understood that to, wow, I didn't understand that, and then being yep, angry because like when you first start, you're not gonna be like, ups- well, you shouldn't be upset if you don't understand everything. But when you get like good, but not that good, but kind of good. You're like, yep. I didn't yeah, understand me. that, and now I'm angry because I'm used to understanding. So definitely, yeah. like, common feeling, bad feeling, but it's common. Yeah, Everybody that's... will feel that at some time where, where you're like, I'm going to cry because I feel like I should be able to understand this by now. And you've got yes. that. It comes from that internal sense of, like, I deserve this. I've worked X hundred hours. Why can't yeah. I have, why can't we have nice things? It's like, I deserve this. And you have to let go of that that feeling of like i earned this it's like no just keep going like the process works just put in the time and you know you don't get anything for free and sometimes something is just really hard and the next day it might feel easy again but yes all of us do get to that point where we're like i'm gonna cry because i really think i should understand this (laughs) i feel like i'm at that point where i expect to understand a lot but at the same time I, I'm not bothered when I don't, I don't know. I I just don't care. (laughs) I'll get it when I get it. (laughs) I'm patient, I guess. I feel like that in German, like I'm very comfortable in German because I've read like dozens and dozens of books and watched, you know, whatever, a million TV. So when I find something in German that I don't understand, it elicits this like sense of curiosity, like, what is this? You know, like, so it's, yeah. it's a much different feeling when you're on cruise control there where you're just like, yeah, all right, I'm going to dial up like Zabina Hostenfeld and watch like quantum physics explanations in German and be like, yeah, this is normal. But like when you get to something that's like new, then you're like, yes, I found like the promised land where that's going to advance me. But like in Italian, I'm not at that point, right? I'm still like, I'm watching these guys kind of like shoot the shit about random topics and there's so much that I don't get, right? So like there's... There's a million opportunities for me to learn, but also sometimes it kind of drags on you. So one, again, I'm going off topic. This has been like the most off topic podcast. Delvian, while I have you here, uh, you met your wife in Chinese class, right? That is correct. I did an intensive immersion course at uh, my university, Simon Fraser University in Vancouver. And they have a program where the computing science uh, some student computing science students can choose to do half their degree at SFU and half in Zhejiang Dashi in uh, in Hangzhou in China. And I had already done my degree at that point, but I, I wanted to go along for just the Chinese immersion part. Uh, and so I met my wife in Chinese immersion class, and then we went on exchange to China together. Uh, and, you know, later we went to Germany together and stuff like that. So, yeah, but yeah, we met in Chinese class. So do you guys ever immerse together? uh we have and like i mentioned like we watched star trek like front to back to back to back like like a lot of star trek uh, in together. german in german and that one was actually that one was i imagine was pretty tough for her she's looking at me across the room right now but i imagine that was pretty tough for her because at the time i had the basics in german and i wasn't understanding a lot of tv but like i had a lot of good basics whereas she was just like hey this is new let's dive into german and i'm like oh i watched star trek right there. is we started on Enterprise, which I hadn't watched before, so I'm looking at the subtitles and I'm like, what's that funny B thing? <laughs> I forgot that we started on Enterprise, but then we switched to DS9 or something. So, like, so but, like, no primate. Stuff like that, all the standard phrases, so I was getting something. But yeah, when we switched to either DS9 or Voyager, then it was like, okay, I know these characters, I know what's supposed to be happening, I care about the characters, yeah. so now I can enjoy it more. Familiarity is a powerful uh, tool there, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's priming. Uh, so one of our team members, Ben, with an E, calls it uh, the fourth channel. <laughs> but the official term is that's right, priming. That's right. uh, and I definitely think, like, going back to, like, being a beginner, immersion's hard. If you just choose something, if you're lucky enough to be learning a language that does have something that you're already familiar with. Um, so Star Trek in German or something, or in a variety of European languages, definitely priming yourself and watching a series you already know is good. So like with Japanese learners, it could be a series that you previously watched in English, dubbed or subbed, right? Or in your case, Star Trek 
And I think that priming is like really good for beginners. Uh, just another quick tip on that is there's a variety of books, like novels, there, and, and over time you'll find some novels that are like a famous author worldwide where it's a moderately easy novel and it's been translated to a million languages. And one example is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, um, originally written, I believe, in Portuguese and has been translated to I don't know how many languages. So I read that in Hindi and I'm reading it in Italian now and I read it in German and Spanish and Swedish and like it's available in so many languages and then another one was like john boyne who is an irish author wrote this book called the boy in the striped pajamas which is like a incredibly distorted historical uh kind of almost kids book about these these kids in the holocaust that meet each other and whatever so like it's not historically accurate but the the language is very like easy because it's kids talking to each other and I found that in so many different languages. So you kind of collect these books where, where they are easy enough to read. And then you remember them from the previous time you read them. And so I kind of like collect those as like uh, things that I search for when I start a new language. Hey, do they have that book translated? Do they have this book translated? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think we're just about out of time. Um, I wanted to sum it up. <laughs> like I always do, um, where basically to fit in immersion, um, do what you enjoy, especially in the beginning. And um, there is a lot of time waste in the day with social media and other things. So a really good strategy is to make immersion easy for you, whether it's change your environment or have a lot of materials ready for you when you want to immerse. That's a really good way to um, fit it in throughout your day. And with that, thank you, everybody, for coming to the live recording of the Patreon of the Refold Roundtable podcast. Um, it will be available on YouTube and Spotify if you would like to listen to it again or listen to past episodes. Um, if you like this episode, please leave a comment and give us a like. That helps us immensely. And if you would like to vote on next week's topic the voting is now open in the refold central discord make sure that you um, re-enter your suggestions from previous weeks because we don't look at previous suggestions we just look at the ones that people want us to look at most recently so thank you so much and we'll see you again next week thanks for tuning into this week's episode of the refold podcast we hope you enjoyed listening and maybe even learned something new Projects, events, and content like this podcast are only possible thanks to our generous patrons. If you liked this and want to see more similar projects, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Visit community.refold.la slash Patreon-benefits to learn more.